Hey, welcome back. This is Jeremy with Evocatus, and uh, today's episode, we are going to move on to the next step in uh, uh, showing how to build our Galil using one of our Evocatus barrels. Um, these principles will transfer to other similar platforms, particularly AKs, uh, for you builders out there. And that's, that's ultimately why I am doing this, um, you know, it's for Johnny Havasack out there that might be building on, you know, uh, on his kitchen table or in the garage. And, you know, I've got, I get a ton of questions uh, from, you know, all, all manner of builders, whether it's novice as well as, you know, other people in the industry that's really just trying to pick my brain to see how I do stuff. And, um, you know, frankly, like I could, I don't want you guys to fall on your sword. You know, Evocatus and what what even our what our name even stands for, we are huge Second Amendment advocates uh, and supporters in an armed populace and in, in good citizens and uh, you know having having arms, bearing arms. And so we want to encourage you to build these guns, giving you the the information uh, and the education of how this works. Uh, will hopefully inspire you to, uh, uh, you know, official answer is that you know how this is done so that you could have a builder do it for you. Okay, uh, that, that disclaimer is out there. Regardless, I want you to have a good understanding that may inspire you to build these, uh, you know, with the assistance and under the supervision of a trained and licensed gunsmith, of course, um, you know, whether it is coming to perhaps one of our build classes or, you know, with someone else, but Hey, get these kits, build these rifles or pistols and, and, you know, make it fun. And, uh, you know, but I also want you to make them right. And getting back into this for these, for this build, you know, we start from the foundation and we work our way out. So uh, we torqued in our Evocatus barrel into our Tortort receiver. Uh, now, I say, you know, I've said this many times, we pretty much build our barrels for Tortort receivers. We test fit every one of our barrels once they're threaded. We test fit them in a Tortort receiver. Uh, just, you know, every single one of them is QA'd and checked that way. Uh, so you know, definitely we love, we love what they do. Uh, so mad shout outs to them moving right along. Uh, showed you guys how to strip your bolt. We showed you how to properly force match, uh, to proper head space. Um, you know, what I was talking about before in the last episode, I wanted to kind of clear up, uh, these bolts, by the way, they're, uh, I was really addressing a, a question, uh, that, that I'd had about them, but these bolts are, are heat treated throughout. They're, they're fully hardened. And additionally, the, uh, the original Kalishnikov, um, uh, manual discusses, uh, and recommends, you know, force matching the lugs, you know, for virgin bolts, as well as force matching, uh, you know, uh, uh used, uh, bolts as well. So, you know, I mean, it's, it is, it is part of the process, but I just kind of wanted to clear some of that up. Okay. So, um, uh, barreled receiver, torque to spec, we've got it, we've got it installed, uh, with a proper headspace. So our bolt bolt carrier are good to go. Then, uh, last episode, I went ahead and showed you guys how to custom fit your, your, uh, handguard retainer and how to make sure that your, your handguard fits, uh, you know, nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and smack this in with my rawhide mallet. Uh, no sense of putting the handguard on there. We don't need it. So we've got a handguard in place. We have a barreled receiver. The next step in this process is we need to measure and figure out where our gas port is going to go. And I've had a bunch of you people, uh, a bunch of you guys that, had, what do you mean you people? A bunch of you guys have, uh, have, have asked me, you know, it seems to be a, a, a common question of like, how do you, how do you drill your gas port? And, you know, uh, we're poking a hole in the barrel that 
obviously is, uh, you know, uh, potential for stress there uh, to kind of freak some people out and give you anxiety. So maybe I can kind of calm your nerves a little bit and uh, just show you an easy way of doing this. You know, frankly, I, I want... I want the the common builder as the whole purpose of doing this. I want the just the builders at home to have an understanding of how to do this. That's why I'm not showing you, you know, fancy uh, fixtures and jigs and machinery and all this kind of stuff. Uh, man, I'm showing you stuff with common hand tools and and you know a sharpie marker. Okay, so like you can do this. Uh, you know, just uh, just take your time and understand that like. Hand tools are always going to be, uh, you know, in, in, I won't say always, but, you know, uh, most of the time just using hand tools, you can get a really, really nice result because uh, you're, you're doing, you're removing material or you're doing something very slowly instead of, you know, you goon it up with, uh, like, say you go crazy, all bubba it out with a Dremel or something like that. You know, uh, everybody has heard those or has seen those uh, those poor examples of uh, guys that have gotten a little crazy. So anyway, let's let's get on. I'm gonna stop running my mouth about this. So first things first, uh, we need a center line, and this is where I, you know, I might not be helping y'all out with this. Uh, I'm just showing you uh, a way that I do it. But I have I have the calibrated eyes and uh, and the ability to to draw them fairly artistic, and so when I when I do this and and a lot of times you know not just doing machine work or doing uh, you know metal fabrication and all this other stuff I, I've I've had a calibrated I've had many years of being able to calibrate these eyeballs, but I will tell you right now uh, you need you need to determine where the top of your barrel is. And, and I kind of did that last time with, uh, with our lovely handguard retainer. And, and really you have to be careful because, you know, just like with AKs, especially AKs, uh, you know, it, they get kind of wonky because a lot of times your gas block, especially uh, this, th this, uh, this gas block isn't even made, you know, it's not even straight. <laughs> like when, when they're made, a lot of times they can be canted, you know, from, from, uh, from the bottom where the barrel is going through versus, you know, the top and you look down it and it might look canted, right? Uh, it very well is, but it was made that way. And so, you know, the flat on the top, uh, it, it is not always a good reference line. So you really need to look at the bigger picture on this stuff. Um, and really, that's why I don't like a blanket, uh, you know, uh, a batch answer to all of these because a lot of times all of these kits, it's its own unique solution. They're all, you know, this is a puzzle that we're putting together and all these parts are going together for the very first time. And, and that's why I like to, you know, kind of Lego these things and puzzle piece them out uh, one step at a time. So, it, you know, it, it's why we don't make batch guns you know, factory batch type stuff and you're just poking holes and stuff, you know, just for mass production. And then, you know, you put it together and, and those, the differences in those tolerances, whether at the bottom or the top tolerance of how they were made, manufactured, whatever, uh, they, they start stacking and then you get like some crazy wonky shit. So let's, uh, let's, let's consider for a moment what, what we need to do here. And, and what I want to show you is I need to know where the top of of my barrel is and that's that's you know easy because that's where we're going to poke the hole it's not going to go off in a 45 degree angle or nothing like that uh you know as as far as uh our, our barrel goes it's going to be directly in the top of the barrel so what i like to do is i i draw a reference line i've already cleaned it off from the last episode but uh you know just to, so i can show you guys again what i'm doing um but but honestly a lot of times i'll draw a freaking a, a line all the way down because we're using it in different parts of the population process, we're populating the barrel. All right, correct, correct tool for the job. I'm not using the back of a of a rat tail file this time. Uh, my correct tool is just a just a, a flat head screwdriver to uh, to cam that up and and get it started. And then I like to use my rawhide mallet. And why rawhide? Because 
rawhide isn't. Let me drop things. Um, <laughs> reset. Uh, your rawhide isn't going to is going isn't going to make uh, or I won't say isn't is less prone to make tool marks. Okay, and uh, you know for for the pros out there, tool marks and fit and finish and all those things it really matters, right? Like you know you. Oh, I'm doing a battlefield pickup, and it doesn't matter what it looks like, <laughs> and I and I can hide all of all of those details uh, into there. Okay, well that's that's great, but you know um, you also don't want to have this thing scarred up and and you know uh, have to get a tetanus shot because of it. All right, or maybe do whatever. Uh, go hard, go hard in the paint. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna stop running my mouth and let's uh, let's get after it. So. We need to figure out, okay, let's get, let's do this. Let's go ahead and, and I'm going to draw our line here. Check this out. Uh, now, a lot of times, I'll start all the way back from the receiver. Uh, this flat isn't on, on the very top, so I have to be caref careful of an optical illusion of this flat, uh, you know, messing with my barrel. If you want to find a different way where the top is, eyeball it, do whatever you need to do. I'm just showing you, uh, you know, one of my methods and how I kind of transfer this. So then I'm going to paint us, paint me like one of your French girls. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll take this motherfucker all the way out. All right, man, so there is a line on top of the barrel, all right? Um, it's, it's good enough for government work. Honestly, uh, it's, it's just for reference, and, uh, but, but that's where we need to know where the top of the barrel is so we can put a hole in it. Awesome. Now we need to go ahead and build this sucker up. And uh, so first things first, let's go ahead and put in our gas tube. Then we're going to take uh, with, with our bolt just because, does it really matter? Probably not. <laughs> um, and then I like to go ahead and finish finish it out. So take our spring, get a recoil spring in there. And, oh, by the way, while we're talking about this, um, you may have to do some some fitment of your, of your dust cover. Do that before you do any of this other stuff. So I've already done it. I've already made sure that this dust, dust cover uh, fits. So, um, boom, easy day. And so this, this is now built up. And, and the reason why is I want this dust cover. I don't want to be making adjustments to my gas tube and my dust cover or anything else. Uh, when I already have a hole drilled in my barrel and my, uh, gas block, my gas block is already, you know, pressed into place. Uh, another thing to consider is if you need to clean out, uh, your, your gas block, now's the time to do it before it's installed. Like same thing, parts prep and all that kind of stuff. Neat. That that all is much easier uh, to accomplish before you have it put onto the gun, right? So if you know you want to polish uh, some of this out, or you know uh, smooth some of that out, or whatever, uh, go ahead and do it now. It's an easy it's an easy fix. You know, a lot of times you just have a lot of gunk and, and crud in there. Clean it out before we go this far. Before we get to this point. Okay, so. Um, our, our next, and we, we could go ahead and put on the handguard retainer. It, you know, it's not really necessary. Um, so I'm just going to leave it off. All right. So now we have our, our, our barreled receiver with, you know, um, uh, with our bolt, bolt carrier and everything installed. Okay. So now, uh, well, I'm missing a part. Pause. <laughs> Okay, so getting back to uh, to the task at hand. So inside our gas block, inside our gas block, we have our our gas port, right? And that is where we are tapping gas uh, from the top of the barrel. We're routing it up to uh, to 
utilize that gas in the cycle of operations to push on our piston, right? And that's what's going to, uh, you know, uh, cycle the bolt back. Okay, so if we look inside where the barrel goes through, you can see where that gas port is, okay? And, and gas blocks differ, okay? This is why I do not like pre-drilled holes on barrels. Um, you know, depending on, depending on the maker, but the gas port could vary wildly in where it needs to be. Uh, so I would rather just drill a hole myself. And so now that we have this mocked up, now we put this on here and, you know, I'm just going to put this, uh, on, on the side next to it. Obviously it's not pressed on, right? But now we, now we can see, and we, we want to be careful. Look, look at, look at the adjustment, you know, uh, from our, and this is with spring tension, all the pressure on it and all this kind of stuff on our, uh, gas tube. But, you know, if, if we have a little bit of gap, you know, just depending on, uh, whatever, but I'll tell you right now. So the gas tube is pushed all the way forward and, and we want to be careful not to, not to pinch it. We want, we want the gas tube to be equidistant across, uh, or from our, uh, from our barrel. We want it to be nice and uniform, uh, and, and essentially where it's going to sit in space, right? Uh, once, once it all gets fixed. So we're going to go ahead and plug our piston and just like we were assembling it, but it's not, it's not pressed, right? All right, so easy day there. And there again, we can take, check this out. I'm gonna hold that in place. And if we set this right next to it, we can take our handy dandy silver marker and make a reference line here and make a reference line here. So now I have now I have lateral limits, right? Um, and and I don't like to gap this, all right? Uh, what I mean is, you know, some some guys when they build them, they want a little bit of gap. Check it out. If if you go and you know you, I know that if I press this barrel, right? Excuse me. If I press this gas block onto this barrel, I measured I measured everything out with this flush. So when I go to press this in. Uh, to where it needs to be, when I go and put it on the press, whether it's a bottle jack press or, you know, some other fancy schmancy uh, machinery that you're using, whatever your method is, when I go to press this on, right, I measured it with this gas tube. Well, I'll tell you right now, when I go to press this on, the gas tube is going to be in place. That's my reference line. So I know that this needs to be pressed when this is flush with my gas tube. And you have to make sure you keep the gas tube pressure all the way forward, right? You have, when, while you're pressing it, the gas tube, you know, uh, obviously in this case, the gas tube can slide back, but gas tube has to be in place, okay? So that's, that's already, hey, that's, that's where it's gonna press to. The gas tube is gonna stop it, all right? So now we have reference lines. Sweet action. We can take this apart. Put all that aside. Now I want to take my reference lines, and again, just just keep in perpendicular. Let's go perpendicular to our top lines. We're just going to make sure that take our time here. Just a little out of time. Look at that. So, oh, that's a little hanky right there. Okay. Does it have to be like that? No. Do I do that every time? No. Uh, but I, I want to do it just to just to show you guys. So, you know, to, to kind of illustrate what we're doing here. But basically, what, what I want to show you is now I know, like, this is roughly, you know, and hey, are we a couple thousandths off here or there? What if I go too tight? What if it goes in too tight? All right, well, you know, if we go too, if we go out too far, okay, that's no bueno, right? If, if we're gapped too far, and that's why I like to press this, uh, you know, that's, that's my stop. Once this, once this is pushed all the way forward and it's where it needs to be, boom, it presses. 
once this is tight, there's no slack or slop in it, uh, then, then we're good to go. If, it, if you go in a little bit too far, not by much, because in this case, you know, you've got your, your, your uh, porting here, you can, you can take off with a flat file, there again, and just, you know, boom, a little, uh, just a thousands. Just a little bit like that. Just a little bit like that, right? And, and, you, can, and you can clean that up, right? And, and, and take up some of that slack. But I don't need to, you know, that's, that's in a uh, having, to, having to solve problems, and, and that's not the point of what we're doing here. Uh, what, I'm, what I want to do is to show you uh, the process of measuring this gas port. Okay. So now we, now we know, and, and here I'm trying to, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but where the barrel comes through, we, we can see our, our, gas, our gas port inside where it's going. In this case, you know, it's a, it's a 45 degree angle on this gas block. All right, sometimes they're 90 degrees, sometimes they're 45 and a lot. You know, one of the methods is to go ahead and press this and then, you know, drill off all the way through, right? You guys uh, will drill using your gas, uh, your gas block and that port as your drill guide. And that is a method uh, I, I don't tend to ascribe to, but this way. All right, so because this is at a 45 degree angle, you know, there, there's a, there's a, an interesting oval kind of that's uh, that hole is made inside there. Um, and we want to kind of hit the, the center of that. Well, this is where I come back to my calipers and using, using the, the depth gauge of our calipers, if you will, that will tell me from this shoulder to this end, uh, to the end of this. Okay. How, how, uh, how, how deep that is and what that measurement is. And, and really, I just need a, a fairly decent idea because, well, let's, let's just, let me just show you guys. Okay, so I could do it this side, right? But I've got this in the way. So let's flip it over and let's measure it from here. We're gonna take, we're gonna use our shoulder right here and we're gonna butt this up against that. And then we're gonna look inside and it might even it might even need a flashlight. I keep one on me. I use this as much as I use a pocket knife. Um, but you're going to determine, you know, and, and you're going to have to... <laughs> Sorry, let's get rid of this. I'm just going to do this real quick. So butt up against the shoulder. Look at it from both ends. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then use your uh, use your flashlight. Yeah. And what I can also do. I don't, know who, I don't know if you guys are seeing me do this. Okay, so I'm looking, as this is inside here, I'm looking at where this sits in relation to the gas port, in relation to that hole. What you can also do, just because we want to make sure that, hey, once we hit this measurement, this is what we're going to use. This is... This is uh, this is our gauge, if you will. But you can also, if you have this 45 degree, you can you can look you can look through the hole and see if you can see the face of that. So you know that hole measure twice, cut once. Uh, we want to we want to measure this and make absolutely sure that this is uh, our reference point. Okay. So that's that's what I'm also doing. Just kind of. Again, showing you my tips and tricks here. So I'm looking inside there, and I'm looking at the I'm looking through the actual gas port, and yeah, I can I can see that. I want to make sure that I check it out with my with my light. So forgive me. I don't have an extra hand. I'm pretty happy with that. 